I have a story to share that involves freezing temperatures, alien monstrosities, and a game that almost broke me. That's right, we're diving into my experience with The Thing video game from 2002 by Computer Artworks. Now let me tell you folks, when I first started playing The Thing, it was an absolute blast. The atmosphere was chilling, the suspense was palpable, and the gameplay had me on the edge of my seat. Five nights in front. I was hooked from the very beginning, ready to unravel the secrets of the Antarctic Research Facility. But then, my friends, the game took a turn. The second half hit me like an unexpected alien attack, like a brick to the back of my noggin. It was like a roller coaster ride that suddenly derailed and sent me spiraling into frustration and madness. I struggled, my friends. I struggled so hard that I was just a pixel away from rage quitting the whole game. The challenges became overwhelming, the difficulty spiked, and my sanity. Eh, I was hanging by a thread. Shit, like, oh my god. What the fuck? Why are there so many people? Stay here, stay here. Oh my god, bro, like, oh. I gotta be getting trolled right now. This has to be a prank. I, I don't know what to do. Genuinely speaking, I don't know what to do. What do you do in, in this situation? It was like the developers decided to throw everything they had at me, testing my patience and gaming skills to the limit in the worst ways. From alien ambushes left and right, puzzles that seemed unsolvable, and a sense of dread that seemed to seep into my very freaking soul. So grab your courage, steal your nerves, and join me as we embark on a thrilling adventure through the thing. But before we jump into the deep freeze, let's take a look at how it all began. Peter Artworks, the masterminds behind the thing, were determined to make a unique gaming experience to fans of the film. You know, because shooting aliens on your own is just too easy. <laughs> They wanted to spice things up and make you question everyone and everything. Just like in the movie, the Thing game is set in an isolated research facility in Antarctica. You play as Captain Blake, the most generic wheat brand guy ever, who leads a team of soldiers tasked with investigating strange occurrences and boy, things get hella weird really quick. The gameplay combines action, exploration, and paranoia inducing mechanics. You see, not only do you have to deal with the deadly alien creature, but you also have to monitor the trust and fear levels of your team members. You alright bro? Like, this is too much. This guy is fucking going insane. Hey. No, you getting light, bro? Like, he's too scared. God damn it. Hey, buddy, you okay? Can you even trust them? Are they secretly infected? It's like playing a twisted version of Among Us in sub-zero temperatures. Not only that, what's interesting about this super old game is they dynamically interact with the environment. If they see dead bodies and they're not used to seeing that, some of them will even vomit. So, I, I, I... He must have drunk some prime energy. The game begins in Outpost 31 shortly after the events of the first film, and two teams of the US Special Forces show up to investigate the camp. Captain J.F. Blake is the leader of the Bravo team. Basically, this is the tutorial section of the game where you learn how to interact with your team, do some environmental puzzles, and basically get down to figuring out the whole story of the game. How do I shoot? Oh my god. Look at that. Can I shoot this guy? You're gonna get us killed. Oh, thanks. Thanks for healing me, man. Can you kill the... Th Thank you. Can you get out the way? All right. All right, thank you. Oh, he healed him. What are you doing? <laughs> you guys are under the command of Colonel Whitley, who constantly talks to you guys through the radio. You guys find an alien UFO, hear a message from RJ McCready describing how basically everybody turned on each other and there's like a weird monster that mimics any creature and assimilates and kills everything in its path. Throughout the game, McCready is nowhere to be found, but you guys don't care about any of that. You guys set up explosives around the facility and basically destroy the outpost. First of all, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna shoot the first dude that, that pissed me off for the day. I'm like, bro, you kind of pissed me off today, man. So this is my one excuse. Bravo team leaves and Blake decides he wants to be a real hero and heads to the Norwegian camp to locate and reinforce Alpha Team. During this section, that's when you first get into a combat encounter. And this is where some interesting things happen. What kind of fucking Resident Evil camera angle was that? Now let's talk about the combat. The Thing game introduced a unique feature, the ability to set enemies on fire. Yes, you heard that right. It's like the developers went, hmm, how can we make this game scarier? I know, let's light everything on fire. Don't get too excited about the fire. Just remember, in Antarctica, you need to conserve your matches like they're made of gold. It's like trying to ration your snacks during a Netflix bin session. You see, you can take blood tests throughout this game, and you can also test your teammates to see if they're actually the Thing. It's a unique callback to the first movie. See, I looked at my own blood. <laughs> How can you trust this guy to look at his own blood and be like, yeah, it looks normal to me. All right, here, let me do it on you. See, we're all normal. The fuck? The fuck was that? What's wrong with you? Oh, shit. 
Carter, did you know about this? What's happening to you? No! What the fuck? How do I shoot? Fuck! Holy fuck! He's squirting on me! Fuck, they're both... Oh, shit! Oh, oh, oh fuck! I'm sorry! Turn this, you bastard! Bro, oh my god, aiming with this shit is hard! Turn the flashlight on this motherfucker. Now what? Yes. What the, the thing game had it all. Tense gameplay, eerie atmosphere, and enough jump scares to make your heart leap out of your fucking chest. It's the perfect recipe for sleepless nights and questioning your own sanity. But hey, that's what we love about horror games, right? Oh, those are the walkers. I can see him just... What the fuck? That's a wall- oh, oh, oh. Yeah, bitch. I got 10 grenades for you. Oh, I'm cooked. Oh, I'm cooked. Oh, okay. Move. Ceiling penis. It's cold as shit. <laughs> so Blake and his dude get separated and Blake continues on on his own. He finds a radio room. However, somebody stole the radio and fled into a nearby warehouse. You always... Oh my god! Our medic! You betrayed us! Yo. That motherfucker right there? Not human. You wanna know how I know? Watch this. Alright, let's do this. What? I swore he wasn't human, bro. I swear! Do not betray me, bro. I'm very vulnerable right now. Are you sure it's not you? Okay. I believe you. No! No! Blake re-encounters Pierce. He's infected. He offs himself, and Blake heads into the warehouse. And moments like these kind of ruin the game's overall gameplay loop. You'll be stuck wandering for a couple minutes at least looking for anything to do. Yeah, some aspects of this game is hella PS2. Like hella PS2 vibes. Oh my god. Oh my god. That ass could have went the other way. I'm not gonna lie to you. Genuinely speaking, how the fuck was I supposed to know that? Now that we've explored the chilling world of the thing, let's have a laugh and dig into some of its negatives. Even though I kinda love the game, well, let me preface this. I love the first half of the game. The second half fucking blows. Maybe I'm just used to newer games telling me everything that I need to do. I'ma chalk it up to the game being from 2002, but it's really hard not knowing where to go. But man, is this game super vague and broad. Let's talk about the friendly AI. Now your teammates in the game are meant to assist you, but sometimes I feel like they've attended the Stormtrooper school of shooting, of doing anything, matter of fact. Why are there so many people? Run. I gotta speed run this shit. Bro! You gonna shoot him? Oh my god! Where the hell's the ammo? Nick, wait! Seriously, they couldn't hit the broadside of an alien spaceship if their lives depended on it. It's like they've mistaken the Antarctic for a vacation spot, just enjoying the snow while you're fending off a shape-shifting horror from outer space. Oh, and let's Run. not forget the classic AI oh pathfinding. God, no. I sure do love 2002. It's like your team members have their own secret Olympic sport called find the most obstacle-ridden route ever. You find yourself yelling at it the screen, is. no, 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 not through the wall, you genius, around it. It's like they're playing an it advanced is. game of the floor is lava and failing spectacularly. The fuck is wrong with these guys? Get in, come, bro. This guy think he's gangster, bro. Jeez. No, come here. Like I find my way into the warehouse, and after some more shenanigans, I find out that a doctor named Faraday has a research team that's been studying the thing or some crap like that. Come to find out, they're all infected except the doctor. I rescue Faraday. We attempt to leave, and we run into Whitley. Brace yourselves for some truly mind-boggling dialogue. I mean, we all know that in high-stakes situations, people can get a little tense, but some of the lines in the thing take the cake. What the hell are you thinking? Oh, relax. The area's secure. 
Secure? Are, are you crazy? Those things are everywhere. Exactly. Why don't you go find him? Whoa, what no, the fuck? I think I'm gonna stay right here. What the fuck? It's like the writers decided to blend horror and comedy, resulting in some unintentional hilarious exchanges. Dude shoots me with a tranquilizer gun like I'm a bear or something, and then he reveals that he's been Albert Weskering himself, basically infected himself with the thing gene, claiming it to be controllable or something. Anyways, Whitley kills Faraday, and we set off into the lab. Now the lab is really, really, really freaking annoying. Hey, bro. Bro, what up? Doubt you're human. What are they doing to me? A circumcision machine. I don't have a weapon. Am I supposed to just run? Ow. Wait, I can lock him in here. Come in here, big boy. Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, man. Put me on for it. Fuck you. Ah! Run! Oh my god, ow. Bro, move! Bro! Oh my god. So we have to talk about the good old save system. Now in this game, saving your progress isn't as simple as pressing a button. No, they decided to add a touch of realism. You see, you have to find these little radios to record your voice to save the game. And there are no checkpoints, by the way. Every time you die, you don't even get a restart from save option. You get restart the entire level from the beginning or go back to the main menu where you can load your save option. And it was very annoying when you find yourself stuck on one of those parts where you're gonna be consistently fucking dying. It's it's like they went, hmm, how can we make this player question their life choices even more? So when you do find a save point, it feels like discovering a hidden treasure. But oh, no, 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 no. Everything comes with a cost. You see, you don't automatically wow. heal in this game either. So if you save the game with half health or a sliver of health and you find yourself surrounded by enemies, you're basically going to be soft locked in the game unless you restart the whole level. And even if you restart the whole level, if you started that level with half health, you're still going to have that health. Trust me when I say this, it was not fun, especially the second half of the game. The level design in the second half falls extremely flat. Blake basically unearths a government conspiracy. Government is going to use a super small form of a thing, call it the cloud virus, and basically use it for biological warfare. But to be honest, this plan doesn't sound valuable. The thing is an alien from space, and I doubt you can really control it. But the twist is Whitley was in charge of the entire operation, and he injected himself with a form of the cloud virus to cure his cancer, which I don't really get. You see an assimilating alien that killed everybody, and like, maybe this can cure my ailments. Blake basically fights his way through this horrible, horrible level. I I absolutely hate the ending of this game. From enclosed rooms, stupid enemy AI, the health not being upgradable, so basically you're stuck with the same amount of health from the beginning to the end of the game, and the most tanky bosses you've ever faced in your entire life. I love constantly being barraged with hits. And I love, my character just doesn't shoot the gun. It's not shooting, he's simply not shooting. He, does, he just doesn't feel like shooting the gun. I gotta respect that, he's gangster for that. He's like, no, I don't want to. Like, is this guy, like, who, who is this guy right now? This is incredible. This game is amazing. Every every aspect about this game is amazing. I can't stop either. Not only are they tanky, their attacks are fucking awful. I found myself All stuck right. in some boss rooms for an know. hour, and it's not because I sucked. The combat in the thing isn't really that good. I feel like the thing would have strived more if they focused less on combat and more on environmental storytelling and figuring out who and who's the thing. If they stuck more to a more story-based game rather than having it devolve into a third-person shooter at the second half, the thing would have been a way better game, in my opinion. All right. Now where do I go? What do I do? He sets Whitley ablaze. Whitley is unaffected by it. Light work, no reaction. Ew. Dude ate some pink sauce. Vagina! Oh my god. This boss fight with Whitley is pretty... Eh. But a helicopter pilot shows up and helps me out. Come on. God, this, the aiming in this shit is so atrocious. There we go. <laughs> it went right back in. Oh, hell no. This motherfucker mean business. Yeah! 
Yeah! Yeah! This dude lasted five seconds. I thought this guy was gonna be like some all powerful demon. Uh, Is this? So what's your name, smartass? McCree. Oh. And in the end, the helicopter pilot reveals himself to be RJ McCready, aka Kurt Russell. But you know what? Despite the struggle, there's some oddly satisfying things about facing this game that pushes you to your limits. Even though it is crafted in 2002, so a lot of the gameplay loops is pretty bad. I may have yelled at the screen a few times. Gone. Oh my god. Oh. More than a few times. Maybe even questioned my life choices, but deep down, I knew I couldn't give up. The satisfaction of finally overcoming those challenges was unlike anything else. It was like reaching the peak of a treacherous mountain, covered in blood and guts and people and lizards and whatever the hell the thing is made out of. Looking back at that journey you've taken and realizing just how far you've come, the bad second half couldn't break me completely. So, my fellow losers, while the thing game may have almost shattered my nerves and tested my spirit, I can't deny that the journey was kind of worth it.